going on everybody my name is lb the realist with surrealistic studio surreal news where the real is surreal thank you for joining me on this segment so go ahead and hit that like button if you don't mind hit that comment and subscribe and share this video when i'm done so more people can get the message so pg and e power line suspected in dixie fire was set to be buried underground in safety move this article is going to be from the los angeles times here um, and i'll leave it down below if you guys want to check it out for yourselves we all know that the dixie fire has been raging uh, now it's the second largest fire in uh, American history, I believe. So we'll go ahead and read this article right here. Um, I'm sorry, the second largest fire in California history. So it says, after Pacific Gas and Electric Equipment sparked a massive fire that burned much of Paradise, California and killed 86 people in 2018, the utility vowed a safety campaign aimed at preventing similar disasters. PG&E said it would bury some power lines snaking through Northern California forest land, significantly reducing the risk of wildfires caused when winds, when winds damage equipment. Among the power lines to be buried or set to be buried was a 10 mile stretch, uh, stretch that may have started this year's destructive Dixie, uh, Dixie fire, now the second largest in California history. The situation underscores the rising scrutiny PG&E is facing this summer as a string of huge fires across Northern California have raged amid hot, dry conditions. PG&E power lines may have been responsible for at least three of those fires, according to documents the utility has filed with the state regulators and federal court. Legal liability from the devastation in Paradise and other wildfires pushed PG&E into bankruptcy and brought vows that the utility would fix, this, fix its uh, power grid. But the new fires have brought new outrage and demonstrated that there's still much work to do. The Dixie Fire has now burned more than 480,000 acres in four counties, destroying more than 400 homes and commercial buildings. Um, the, US Forest, uh, the U.S. Forest Service approved the Lime Burial Project last July, and the California Department of Transportation granted a permit in October. But the project remains in progress with no estimated completion date, said James Noonan, spokesperson for PG&E. This project will require Caltrans and other governmental agency permits, FERC or FERC review, and other land slash environmental dependencies. Uh, Noonan wrote in an email. To, in an email, FERC is the is the Federal Energy Regulatory, the Federal Energy Regulatory Commission. The final completion date for the, uh, this project is dependent on the timely fulfillment of these various requirements. PG&E's Wildfire Risk Governance Steering Committee had approved the work in January after considering public safety power shutoff decisions, ingress and egress issues, and tree fall risk along the power line, which is considered, oh, which was considered moderate, Noonan said. We are taking steps every day to improve the safety and reliability of our electric system, Noonan wrote. This includes working with customers and communities to manage trees and other vegetation located near power lines that could cause a wildfire or power outage. On July 13th, a Douglas fir fell on the line and two fuses were blown, according to documents PG&E filed in federal court. In the filings, the utility described a series of mishaps and delays that resulted in an employee not reaching the site until about 10 hours later, by which time a 600 to 800 square foot fire had ignited. Wow. Before the fire, there were no issues with the equipment on the span of line <clears throat> excuse me, that had been identified but not fixed, nor were there trees that had been targeted for trimming or removal on which the work hadn't been yet performed, Noonan said. A vegetation management inspection took place January 14th, but did not flag the tree that is believed to have fallen on the line as needing work, he said. PG&E had also inspected the two poles between which the tree was found leaning May 13th and found nothing that required corrective action, Newman said. Nine days after the Dixie fire started, PG&E equipment may, might have ignited the fly fire nearly 30 miles to the northeast. Disturbances were recorded on a circuit around the same time the fire broke out and a tree was later found resting on a conductor, the utility said in a report filed with the California Public Utilities Commission. That fire grew to more than 4,300 acres before merging with the Dixie fire, which on Sunday leapfrogged the 2018 Mendocino Complex fire to become the second largest in California history. District attorneys in two counties, Butt and Plumas, is it Butte or Butt? I'ma say Butte and Plumas are investigating PG&E for potential criminal liability in the fire. Okay, so they're being investigated for criminal liability. 
It's literally torn our county in two, said Plumas County District Attorney uh, David Hollister, who has partnered with the Office of Butte County District Attorney Mike Ramsey and the California Department of Forestry and Fire Protection to conduct the investigation. We've lost most of the northern part of our county. Investigators have visited the origin sites of both the Dixie Fire and the, fi and the Fly Fires to gather PG&E equipment and trees that might have fallen onto the lines for forensic examination, Ramsey said. They are examining whether adequate vegetation management was done there and whether equipment was maintained, as well as the amount of time it took the utility to realize there was a problem with the line after a disturbance was recorded, he said. As we all know, that canyon where the campfire started is extraordinarily dry, Ramsey said. We know, they should know. We know, so they should know. The Dixie Fire started in the same canyon, he noted. Ramsey's office previously secured a deal in which PG&E pleaded, uh, pleaded guilty to 84 counts of manslaughter and one count of reckless arson in connection with the campfire, which destroyed the town of Paradise. The utility received the maximum fine of $3.5 million, which Ramsey called woefully underwhelming. But more important was the fact that they were held responsible for the first time for killing folks, he said, noting that PG&E had been previously prosecuted for regulatory violations when its equipment caused deaths. Although no de uh, deaths have yet been reported in the Dixie Fire, prosecutors are exploring other options, oh, I'm sorry, other avenues as well, they said, noting that Section 452 of the California Penal Code uh, sets forth crimes concerning reckless burning. But with the fire just 21% contained and authorities still scrambling to make sure everyone is safe, it remains early in the investigation. Tehama County District Attorney Matthew Rogers said, in, said his office is not investigating PG&E at this time. Lassen County District Attorney Susan Rios said she may ask to join the investigation later if the county sustains losses attributed to the fire, but noted that there hasn't been, there hasn't been a damage assessment conducted there yet. They're just trying to save lives and save towns, said Rios, whose own home remained under an evacuation warning Monday. The events comes, um, I'm sorry, the events come as the latest blow to the beleaguered utility. The events come as the latest blow to the beleaguered utility, which is also facing a criminal investigation for its role in sparking last year's Zog fire that killed four people, destroyed more than 200 homes, and burned 56,000 acres. In addition, to, in addition, a federal judge last week ordered PG&E to explain its role in potentially igniting the Fly Fire and to provide more information about the Dixie Fire, including drone video uh, taken the day it ignited. A drone seen flying over the fire in, in the hours it started is rumored to have been operated by PG&E or one of its contractors, Ramsey said, the siding ground the siding grounded firefighting aircraft for the evening, he said. The siding grounded firefighting aircraft for the evening, he said. The air assets had it pretty well blocked in with retardant at least at less than one or two acres, Ramsey said. The drone showed up and those air assets had to be taken out. And that might and that night it burned down. I'm sorry, and that night it burned through the retardant lines, and now we have the monster that we have. Records show that all the drones authorized to fly on PG&E's behalf on July 13th in Butte or Plumas counties had completed their flights by about 12.30 p.m., Noonan said. U.S. District, uh, District Judge William Alsup, who was overseeing the utility's criminal probation stemming from an explosion of one of its Bay Area gas lines that killed eight people in 2010, also ordered PG&E to provide a list by August 16th of all fires its equipment has started this season. The utility has already disclosed that its equipment might have ignited a third fire, the Bader Fire, which burned a quarter acre in, Mag in Mag Magalia on July 14th. One, one stem of a two, wait, one stem of a two-stem black oak was found leaning on a power line that had snapped, according to court documents. And in April, Sonoma County District Attorney Jill Ratbitch charged PG&E with five felony and 28 misdemeanor counts over its role in the Kincaid fire, which badly injured six firefighters in 2019. PG&E is an investor owned utility that is overseen by the California Public Utilities Commission. It is required to make certain disclosures as a result of its criminal probation, as well as a 2018 law passed by the state legislature that requires utilities to submit annual plans to mitigate the risk of wildfire in their service territories and file quarterly updates on their progress. 
PG&E has consistently failed to meet targets it has committed to in those disclosures for things like vegetation management and equipment inspections, advocates say. The challenge is that every time we see a third party inspection report, either from the Public Utilities Commission or the federal court monitor, we see that over and over again, PG&E has failed to trim the vegetation in the highest fire risk zones like they were supposed to, that they failed to inspect all of their transmission towers and equipment they were supposed to, said Mark Tooney, executive director of the Utility Reform uh, Network, a San Francisco based consumer advo advocacy uh, group. It's, a very concern, it's very concerning that we have so much money being spent and not the kind of results that people expect and deserve. The California uh, Public Advocates Office, a consumer watchdog agency, identified so many deficiencies in PG&E's wildfire mitigation plan this year that in June it submitted a response urging the PUC to issue a finding that the utility was no longer in good standing for the remainder of 2021. Two years ago, the legislature adopted a bill that included a provision laying out a six-step process that would result in PG&E being converted from a private corporation to a quasi-public uh, quasi -public entity called Golden State Power if it is unable to meet safety standards. PG&E is currently at step one. The higher the PUC moves, uh, moves them up, the greater the chance that PG&E will cease to exist as we know it, Tooney said. I wouldn't be surprised to see the PUC looking at moving PG&E up that ladder, given the more recent events, particularly after the CAL FIRE issues it reported. Public utilities differ from investor-owned utilities, mainly in that they are not for profit, so they're uh, beholden only to customers, said Barry Moline, executive director of the California Municipal Utilities, um, a trade group for public utilities. At the time, he said, it's important to note that just because PG&E's equipment might have sparked a wildfire doesn't mean the utility is necessarily at fault. While I think everybody is eager to jump on PG&E, I think that it's really difficult to understand the exact circumstances without an investigation and trying to figure out what happened, he said. I believe that PG&E is highly focused on maintaining their system and doing what they can to minimize any, ignition of, any ignition of a fire. Should it be unable to get a handle on wildfire mitigation, PG&E could also lose the confidence of, his, of its investors, in addition to potentially losing the franchise to provide power, Tooney said. If they get further downgrades in their credit and end up, a junk, at junk, and end up at junk junk bond status, I'm sorry, it's always possible they can end up in bankruptcy again, he said. That would be a terrible outcome for everybody involved, or everyone involved, quite frankly. So again, this is going to be from the Los Angeles Times if you want to read it for yourselves because I stumbled through a lot of it, I know. Um, I will leave it down below so you guys uh, could check it out for yourselves. So basically what they're saying is uh, PG&E is basically uh, being investigated and they've already been proven to have caused fires before, you know, recently, you know. So it's very much in their MO. They have failed to meet uh, uh, vegetation uh, mitigation you know what I'm saying? They fail to properly inspect their equipment, make sure things are on the up and up, and it's been proven already. So uh, again, they're trying to say at the end, well, we don't necessarily know that it's PG&E and this, that, and the other, but I do like the idea they brought up about a uh, publicly owned um, power company. That way there is no incentive to make any money. I mean, that's exactly what we need, just like Medicare. There shouldn't be an incentive to profit of, over people getting sick or people dying in the hospital. You know, there, there should be a profit for that, uh, a profit in keeping people sick. You know, there shouldn't be a profit in power. You know, power should be free for everyone to use. Honestly, I mean, really, we have so many different ways that we can get energy and make this work, but we're profiting from this. And in some cases, literally, you know, like, terrorizing people because of the bills and the increases of the bills that they do you know it just doesn't make any sense it doesn't make any sense for us to be profiting off of this so i like that idea i really like that idea of publicly owned utilities um so we'll see how this goes folks um they're like like the article said they're at step one <laughs> they're already at step one they should be already through the steps i mean honestly they should have already dis disbanded or or broke up this company and made it public already. That's just my opinion. But um, 
this is the second largest fire. The Dixie Fire is the second largest fire in California history. A building smolders, a building smolders as the Dixie Fire burns through uh, downtown Greensville, California on August 4th. On August 4th, it is now the 10th, it's been six days. The massive blaze may have been sparked by PG&E equipment. A whole town just... Didn't they have a movie about this called Silent Hill or something where the town was burnt down? Man, I, maybe I'm mistaken about that, but... Oh, man, that, that's crazy. And shout out to our firefighters out there. They are the true heroes. They are the true heroes. Everybody want to say that cops are here. No, firefighters are the true heroes out there. No no disrespect to the cops out there who put their lives on the line for, for people, you know what I'm saying, and, and do what they need to do. But shout out to the firefighters out there because they literally run to the fire and try to put it out, you know, like, and firefighters lose their lives all the time. You know, they got to carry a lot of heavy equipment. Let me tell you, it takes a special kind of person, a special kind of person to be a firefighter. So shout you out. Shout out all you guys. And, um, all right, we'll leave it there, folks. Leave me your thoughts in the comment section below. Um, like this video, share, and subscribe. Love, peace, and light, folks. Until next time, find me down below. And um, do something kind, rewind. Catch you guys on the next video. Stay safe out there. Stay hydrated. And uh, keep fighting.